Hi, welcome to Wisdom and Beyond. I'm Tina Cahill, and I think we're going to have a really good time today. You know that things are tough out there. We're living in an unpredictable times, unpredictable economy. People are a little bit upset, and I thought what we could really do today is get together with three of my good friends, and so this show is going to be four New Jersey women talking about what they think is going on, what they think is right for their families, how it is they're managing their lives with their busy careers and all that they do, and how they're dealing with this economy that has kept everybody really uncertain. None of us is an economist. Paul Krugman, where are you? Congratulations <laughs> on that Nobel Prize, right? We're just four moms and four women who work and four women who live in this state with differing political beliefs, differing life experiences, and we're going to have a little conversation. You know who I am. I live in Princeton. You know the deal. I travel around. I speak on leadership. I live in an extended family with my daughter and her husband and their family. My husband is a former Marine Corps fighter pilot. He's disabled, and my background is in psychology. We also have here Leanna Brown. Hello, Leanna. Nice to be here, too. How are you? Fine, thanks. Leanna and I just met through a mutual friend not too long ago. Now, Leanna is the impressive one here. Let me tell you about it. Leanna is a former state senator. She was also the former casino control commissioner. She's a columnist for the Recorder's Newspapers, chair of the New Jersey Advisory Committee on the, U on the U.S. Civil Rights Commission, and a, me a member of the White House Fellows Commission. She tells me she was born a Republican, and she has two sons, and she lives in Chatham. Is that right? That's right on. All right. <laughs> and then next to Leanna, we have Janice Kovach, and you may have met Janice before. She's the director of the New Jersey Division on Women. She's a former council member in the town of Clinton, and she worked in corporate America for about 15 years, and she's a staunch Democrat. Would that be true? Absolutely. All right, and Janice has a daughter who's in college and a son five and one seven, right? Yes. And next to me, we have Sasha Rash. I've known Sasha since she was a little girl, and Sasha has a degree in uh, technology from the University of Houston. She's an entrepreneur. She's a licensed cosmetologist, but she also owns a hair salon here in Princeton and a Paul Mitchell lab partner school where she trains hairdressers um, down in Ewing. She's also the retired president, although it's hard for me to imagine you could be retired from anything. <laughs> but anyway, it's called the retired president of the Professional Beauty Association and a former member of um, the general counsel of the Professional Beauty Association. So I've got this impressive crew here. You have a little boy, Keo, who's two, yes, married to Jonathan Best. She has a wonderful mother-in-law because I know her and she's a great woman and a wonderful mother who's a good friend of mine, right? So here we are. We've got Leanna and I are, uh, have our kids grown and we're both grandmothers right. and these two have young children and we sort of want to talk about. So now we know, you know, from the piece of paper who everybody is, but really what I want to know is what's your life like, Janice? It's interesting. Um, you know, I have a daughter in college, so I'm dealing with that whole environment. She's a freshman. She's the first time away from home. Uh, in fact, I just took her to the train this morning. She was going back to school because she was on, on break. And then I have two little ones who are just starting in the elementary school system. So it's like, I got out of it, now I'm sucked back in. You're like my daughter and her husband who figured out they're going to be like 65 when the last kid gets out of school or something. I don't something. Even think about how old I'm going to be when the last one finally graduates. And my youngest has sworn he's going to stay with me forever. Oh, that's so, good. It's always good. You know, it's good until they're 50 and they're with you. And then oh, you think, please. oh, they should have left. You know? I don't even want to think about that. Um, and then, you know, working full time, the work that I yes. do, I have programs all over the state, so I'm yes. constantly on the go and And in around. a state that's really having tough times, mm -hmm. in a country that's having tough times. Absolutely. My husband started his own business this year, so it's, it, it, yeah. it's been an interesting... What do you worry about most? Paying the bills. Paying the bills, yeah. You know, you know, we're lucky in that we put money away, so we're somewhat okay and protected, but it's still an uncertainty. I mean, his business is less than a year old. And they always say, you know, the first five years is when the business right. is going to make it or not make it. Right. So, you know, yeah. we're in that right. we're in that. And when game. you're an entrepreneur, when you've started your own company, there's no safety net. None that, whatsoever. Right? Leading us right into Sasha Rash. Sasha, tell us about your life. Well, having lived without a safety net in my entire <laughs> career, um, it's not for the faint-hearted, that's for sure. Um, and it is an interesting time. I would agree. It's it's um, you're pulled in many di many different directions. Um, and the, you didn't mention in my bio, but I am a registered independent. So that's all oh, I meant to say. That's I'm, right. I know, didn't know you could register as an independent. Yeah, yes. you, you actually register and say independent. Yes. Very yes, interesting. Um, I would never know that since mine always <laughs> says Democrat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, you know, I, I think it reflects 
my independent view of my business, of my family, of um, my worldview. So, what's your day like? Uh, really busy. <laughs> really busy. It starts very early. Um, I have a young child, as you mentioned, my young son Keo. Um, this morning, the nanny was 45 minutes late. I'm grateful to have a fantastic nanny, but 45 minutes late, and I was coming out of Manhattan, so it was it was a really um, really wild ride this morning. And that's why in that book, what women really want, mm -hmm. they talk about women really wanting the same thing. What do you think the number one thing is women want? Time. Time, exactly. Because Sasha, you're running late because the nanny and I'm running late because I'm a caregiver. My husband had a doctor's appointment. It went late and I'm flying through the door. Yeah. So we're all, in, and Janice, I know that, that you have those same kinds of things as mm -hmm. you're all over. And mm -hmm. what about you, Leanna? Let's hear about you. My day started with my oversleeping. So you oh. see, there you go. We all have our problems. <laughs> I was behind the eight ball for starters. Mm. I think it's it's a challenge for me to realize you got to be grounded and one step at a time mm -hmm. today will pass the sun will come up tomorrow um, investments are down one day up another um, I'm more conservative with what I buy I buy a cheaper brand of tuna fish or I um, stretch the mileage on on my car we got rid of a car mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that that's a big help Plus, you get more room in the garage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, are you worried about your future? Because one of the things we're talking about, I was thinking about this. I heard them saying on TV this morning that they wanted to do all this stuff to help retirees. And then I thought about the fact that I'm 62 and maybe that would be including me. Mm. <laughs> what a concept. And I never really thought about that. I mean, you know, I think there's a different psychology to working and having cash flow to living off your assets because then it becomes sort of capital, con con uh, what do you call it, um, saving your capital because everything that you, con con conservation, because everything that you spend comes out of that. Tina, I had a super friend though and he said, you know Leanna, you can't worry about things you have no control over. Absolutely. And frankly this macroeconomic picture is, is beyond me mm -hmm. and therefore you know, I'm not going to watch every single solitary gyration. I'm not going to follow every unemployment statistic. They're very important when you lose your job. Or, you know, my husband has a difficult time. But I, I, I think, you know, the president's right when he tells us crisis feeds crisis. A panic mentality mentality feeds a panic mentality. And well, there's no we question need to about calm that. Down. And there's no question about the that. The future is a retiree. I, I, I just have to try to you know, stretch the dollar. And I worry, and you know, we're all pretty privileged. Would you not agree? No, mm -hmm. I agree more than 100%. Yeah. And it's still very worrisome. I mean, we, uh, my husband and I look at our 401k in the last eight days or 10 days, and That's it is I'm startling. You not to do. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but I, I've, if I don't look at it, I feel like I'm putting my head in the sand and I'm not really facing reality. What is this going to mean? Maybe we don't make a huge decision today about my family, right. but we need to have the facts and get ourselves lined up and wrap our minds around potentially shifting the way mm -hmm. we handle our, our domestic economics, mm -hmm. our little piece of the. And I heard a great breakdown this morning of what this really adds up to for each individual person in the United States, the economic problems. And it's like we all have about $175,000 in debt on a credit card. Hmm. And we can choose to refinance that on another credit card or we can choose to take a big bite now mm -hmm. and figure out how to make this work. Mm -hmm. Problem is nobody knows exactly what that right. big bite should look like, right? Exactly. right. Which just causes more anxiety, right. which can feed into that right. panic and that sense of helplessness. Right. So Right, and I don't think that we're here to solve the nation's problems, although I do have a few ideas. Hmm. But uh, really. <laughs> but, but to say a great place of solace is I don't think you've seen any cut back in your beauty salon, have you? Um, Mm. I, just having gone That's this a, morning is bustling. People yeah. realize the importance of taking time out, doing a little bit to help your mm -hmm. morale so when you look in the mirror you don't scare yourself. Absolutely and that's a great point about in you know, one of my businesses being a hair salon people do make that small investment to feel better maybe they're not taking the twice a month trip to buy, down to Miami um, but they do get their hair done. It, it, there nails, is something specific yes. about right. my business that but, makes people feel but, good. And it's true that the beauty industry has always been somewhat insulated in a downward yeah. market but you know what how about the people that have to make the choice about whether they're going to give their kids breakfast or whether they're going to have to wait and give them lunch. I mean, those are totally different totally situations. Different. How about the difference of am I going to lose my house? Yep. What do I do? Where, how about the single mother or the single father 
who's working two and three jobs and can't get childcare. But, but I mean, I think that what well, I'm just saying, yeah. I think that we can talk about our little issues, but that's where the real impact of this crisis really lands. This is a wonderful state, though, and a wonderful nation, and many of the schools have food assistance for the children oh, sure. that they're, they're are really so you can get breakfast now there's a stigma to me if i go to school and you know are part of that sort of free food bit but i think that's know, changing they have because i see it, it a lot yeah, exactly. with especially with our programs mm, right. I mean, we deal with all of the women's programs right. and a lot of single moms who are out there and who are struggling i forget what the number is but i think it's something like you have to make forty thousand dollars a year to live in new jersey to have a, a you know a, a two-bedroom apartment mm minimum wage jobs don't pay that you know right. and these women are struggling a lot of them have either never worked before or they worked part-time and now they're trying to and I see what the schools are doing is helping families get past that stigma mm -hmm. you know they have the breakfast program and they advertise the breakfast program um, the Women's Heart Foundation does a lot with young teenage girls right. mm -hmm. you know the importance of them having breakfast in the morning and they help them. They, they bring a group of girls together. I think it's a Trenton High School. And they help, and what they do is they give them breakfast, they talk to them about health, and they're benefiting from it, so, but they're also learning something about good nutrition. Right, and I think that's, well, go ahead. Can I just say though, it is, I think there are wonderful programs, and as a very young child, when my mother was um, a single parent and really struggling, I, I, we took, my family took advantage of some mm -hmm. programs and some work-related programs as a young teenager that I did during the summers. And, um, but I have to say, it's so, I mean, it's, some days it's so hard to get from a to Z, that as a struggling parent who's yeah. just trying to show up for work and keep your ki kid well fed, it's like, where do you get that energy from to seek out the heart tr program or to, you know, to find out what's even available right. sometimes can be I'm so a busy life. And, and having run for office that, mm -hmm. um, you know, nobody wants to see a tired candidate. We had discussed this before, but some days are just bad, horrible, terrible days, and you're better off going back to bed. And this is regardless of, you know, what the economy is like. Except it's, if you have to go to work. Well, right. I mean, we don't yeah. have that choice. Yeah. I mean, that's the issue. I could be as tired as I want to be, but I, I have a job right. that I have to go to. The and same people as people are expecting us. you to with be there. Yeah. With less and less benefits. With, you right. know, so mm -hmm. the, the day off isn't an option, at least not paid. Mm -hmm. So so you have to find little ways to take care of yourself, right? Is that yeah. That's really what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. Right? I mean, and we talk about that with all of our programs. When we do our women's conference, we talk about that. It's all about finding time for yourself. And it may not be, you know, 10 minutes every day. It may be 10 minutes once a week. But that yeah. 10 minutes becomes to mean so much more. Exactly because yeah. you do take that 10 minutes. I just wrote an article last mm -hmm. night. I was going to bring it in. Of course, I was flying out the door because I was late because the doctor, da, da, da. We could go on and on. But it's called Virtual S'mores. And I was watching the kids the other night grilling uh, marshmallows out. And they were, like, so happy. And there's all this gooey chocolate and all this kind of stuff. I thought, man, wouldn't it be great if we just had something like a s'more that could keep everybody in the country right now who's worrying about all this stuff, <laughs> um, like, have a moment of respite from all this. So I wrote this article called Virtual S'mores where every letter stands for something. And the first S for s'mores mm. um, was uh, it's unrealistic not to have stress. We're all going to have stress, right? But what you really want is stress without the stress, right? And when we got to the apostrophe, I said that you should do this. You'll like it. Mm, and imagine yourself <laughs> sitting on a mountaintop with the sun beaming. And then Very we go on quiet. and on through the word s'mores. And I sent it out to some people this morning. And I think that that's really what you're, the two of you are saying, and I'm saying too, is nobody's going to make it okay for us to take some time off. Nobody's going to say, oh, here, let me go in and take care of you right. or make it easy. So as my mother used to tell me, if you don't take care of yourself, nobody else is going to, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's such a thing, though, as good corporate management. I heard the head of Campbell Soup speak on Sunday at our church group, and he was talking about the importance if you're a manager and if you have leveled with your employees and if your employees feel that you know they can come to you and tell you what the problem is there was one man that really needed he was a single parent and and he wanted more time with his children mm -hmm. and given that Campbell worked it out so there was more well that's flex a, that's time a great him. company and do you do that in your companies Sasha do you do flex absolutely time? yeah absolutely yeah. I think big business has a lot to learn from small business yeah. in mm -hmm. that aspect especially especially from small female centric businesses I mean you know 99% of my team are women 
Um, and if we didn't historically make those exceptions or make the exceptions not the right word, create a flexible work environment where we could be approached and told about what was going on and then be able to work with the employee to develop a path that would satisfy everyone and our guests, um, yeah, we, we wouldn't have been able to build our company. Women would have opted I, out. I think corporate America still is a little bit afraid of something along those lines. It's, it's you know, Campbell's absolutely a, right. a unique environment. And for we're them. so lucky to have them in Camden. We are. I mean, I worked, yes. when I worked in corporate, you know, there was no such thing as flex time. Yes. You know, you want, you need to take time off. We got seven hours a year that we were allowed to use <laughs> to go I mean, for just... parent-teacher <laughs> conference. Like, I had an hour drive back and forth, so for me, that seven hours was gone in one day. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't understand, and, and if you wanted to move up, well, then you obviously right. had to sacrifice, and, and I did. I mean, I, I believe I sacrificed quite a bit. I was a single parent <coughs> when I was working in corporate America. You know, my daughter spent a lot of time with friends and family before and after school, but that's what we needed to do. You know, I see more of it changing, but I don't see it changing fast enough. Well, some companies like Best Buy <coughs> went mm, that certain of their example. executive divisions. I'm an advisor to the New Jersey um, Committee on Healthy Workplaces mm -hmm. from the APA. And there are these companies where uh, a good friend of mine here in New Jersey, Valerie Brooks Klein, who represents the APA on this, goes in and works with these companies and helps them get what we call a healthier workplace. Mm -hmm. Best Buy being one of those, switched to this uh, flex, everybody could do flex time, and they basically didn't care where they did their work or when they did it, just get it done. Mm -hmm. And their uh, productivity went way up and they really didn't lose employees because women, and the, these are probably middle management positions, a lot of them owned by women, uh, women work, as you well know, late at night. Go look at what time my last email went out. Go look at what time your last emails went out. Sure. You know, and the first one this morning. I mean, you know, <laughs> that's what women do. They work around the rest of yeah. the schedule. But you're, I think that you're right. I think a lot of companies are trying to do that. They're trying to have people work from home a day a week. They're doing all this kind of stuff. But it really can cost you sometimes in climbing the corporate ladder, mm -hmm. or in these big law firms, it can cost you the partner track. You know, if you maybe work four days a week. Now, I think it's starting to change because man, uh, companies are finding that they can't invest all this training in people and then make it so flex inflexible that the people leave. Right. I mean, that must be what you found in your business. Absolutely. I mean, if you're inflexible, yeah, they we, leave. You know, I, on, in my salon and retail business, obviously people have to be there. You can't do a guest um, service whenever you want <laughs> or at midnight. You know, that doesn't work in that environment. But what does work is a you know, working mom who's working um, three really long days. So she's working mm -hmm. Thursday through Saturday, and she's seeing 30 to 40 guests in that time frame. And then she has a four-day week, that, or four-day weekend, where she's doing everything else that's on her schedule. Mm -hmm. At my school, for example, we do, um, we have, we're closed four weeks a year, which kind of fits the academic calendar. Um, and my, t but it's really about giving my team four weeks to replenish, teaching, is really hard, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've learned. Yeah, um, sure. it is That's why I stopped really, being a teacher. <laughs> really yeah, Actually, I thought if I were going to be a teacher, I should 